The Transit CIC started on Sunday from Lorient and is headed to New York. Of the 48 sailors who took the start, 33 are competing in the Amoka class, 13 in the class 40 and 2 in the vintage class. First out, at around 153 zero hours on Monday, the skipper of Sherrill informed his shore crew of damage to his J24 stay. There was a big boom, explains Jeremy, and although the mast vibrated, it was not damaged. He headed back to Lorient to carry out repairs as quickly as possible. He will then set off again, with a reduced crew, to make New York to be at the start of New York Vondi on the 29th of May. Other major damage is to Holson PRB whose bow sprit has broken. He is continuing racing. Clarice Kramer, El Occitani and Provence, undertook a routine check of the boat and has reported to the race organization an issue with the J3 bulkhead. Clarice is safe and uninjured and is headed for repairs in the Azores. The bowsprit of the Class 40, Blue Blank Planet location, has broken in two. After recovering the sail and getting the boat to safety, the skipper is off to a port in Brittany to study the next step. Sebastian Masset, Fusier, retired for medical reasons. There are close duels at the top of both the Amokas and Class 40s. Racing at just over six miles apart, Charlie Dalen, Massif Sani at Provoyance, and Johan Richem, Paprik Arkia, continue to lead the Transat CIC Amoka class where in Class 40, Fabian Delahaye, Le Galais Team Voile, and Ian Lipinski, Credit Mutual, are only separated by a little over four miles. Ravi de partir. Je me suis levé ce matin dans mon lit et là je me dévoile pour aller à New York, donc c'est pas tous les jours. Je suis content d'être là. Dimanche matin à Lorient la base, le soleil réchauffait les cœurs des 48 solitaires de The Transat CIC au moment de quitter ses proches et de partir à l'assaut de l'Atlantique Nord. Beaucoup d'émotions aussi pour, euh, pour le départ comme d'habitude. Il faut gérer tout ça, c'est pas simple, mais on y est, on est content, je suis content de partir. On s'y habitue pas vraiment en fait, hein. on se fait toujours cueillir le matin d'un départ. Euh, c'est jamais anodin d'aller faire ce qu'on va faire. Dans un balai parfaitement réglé, les 13 classes 40 étaient les premiers à quitter le port avec toujours un trop-plein d'émotions à évacuer rapidement. Du côté des 33 Imoca, on s'inquiétait plus du grand froid à venir. Je pense qu'on va rentrer très vite dans le vif du sujet avec ce vent qui va descendre du nord, qui va être très froid. C'est plutôt ça qui m'inquiète. Est-ce euh, que j'ai pris assez de bonnets Parce que nous, on n'a toujours pas mis de système de chauffage, tout ça, tu vois. Je pense qu'il va faire relativement frais. Le routeur parlait d'hier de 5 degrés ressenti moins 10, donc euh, il va falloir quand même être costaud. Euh, vers 13h, ce sont deux marins de renom, les infatigables inventeurs Yves Parlier et Michel Desjoyaux qui ouvrent le bal avec leurs embarcations prototypes propulsées par un kite ou par une voile gonflable. Des solutions inventées par la course au large et qui seront peut-être un jour adaptées au transport de commerce pour le décarboner. Pendant ce temps-là, la flotte s'est rangée entre l'île de Groix et l'Orient et s'élance poussée par un flux léger du sud-ouest de 12 à 15 nœuds. Sans surprise, dans les deux pelotons, les favoris sont rapidement aux avant-postes. Jérémy Bayou, Charlie Dalin et Johan Richaume en Imoca allongent la foulée. Ambrogio Beccaria, Yann Lipinski et Fabien Delahaye en classe 40 donnent le tempo. Les deux voiliers vintage de Patrick Isoard et Rémi Gérin sont encore au cœur de la flotte. Après une dernière marque au sud de Groix, il est temps de prendre le large et remonter au près vers la pointe Bretagne, puis la mer Celtique, cap sur l'Irlande dans la nuit, avant de rêver à New York. Et là, on va tricoter le long de la côte bretonne pour ensuite aller faire un, un gros bord vers l'Irlande. Je suis vraiment content. Voilà, que c'est beau d'être sur la mer. Avec des matchs à tous les étages, la course à l'Amérique est lancée. This is your weekly global sailing highlights show, The World on Water, May 3, 2024. May 2nd was a big day for Ineos Britannia, as the sailing team who took over the program after countless hours of detailed, relentless design, and technical fit-out, led by Sir Ben Ainsley, with a midday dock-out, and a superb, if shifting, breeze, in the range of 8 to 13 knots. Sir Ben is interviewed. 
We're here in Barcelona with Sir Ben Aisley, CEO and Helm for INEOS Britannia. Ben, today has been a long awaited day for the whole team, first day of sailing with RB3. You were helming starboard, what was your feeling? Yeah, look, a big day for the team and obviously to get the boat out, foiling for the first time, well sailing and then, and then foiling, yeah, I got a huge credit to everyone for, for getting us to, to this point. I think you end up inevitably some, some anxious moments when, you know, 75 foot boat, six tons, shooting on for the first time and making sure that all of the stresses and strains on the boat are okay. But we got through that, uh, got up on the foil, and we had some good moments. Uh, we had a few issues that meant we didn't want to take the boat downwind, uh, but we were able to do some good upwind sessions, try to get a feel for a boat, for the boat and the control of the boat. But yeah, over, all in all, a positive day. Can you give us an insight into just how much teamwork has gone into get to this point? Well, it, it's massive in the America's Cup. You see with all of these teams, huge, huge amount of effort. It's hard to explain to people just how complex these boats are and how much effort goes in on the design, engineering, and then, the, of course, the boat build, the, the shore teams, to get these boats ready to sail and then to operate these boats. So. Yeah, I think for our team, I know for all of the other teams, you've got to give everyone a huge amount of credit. First time back into AC75 since February in Ireland 2021. How much different did RB3 feel to your old race boat? Yeah, they both felt a lot different to RB2, that's for sure. And already you just get a feel for different area on the foils and so on, takeoff speeds, performance. Very different boat and, and of course the systems as well. Uh, across the fleet that, that's moved on a huge amount so I think the performance we know will be a lot better with these boats and early days but I think it can be a lot of fun to sail. As per your first feeling from today in terms of control systems how much more responsive and, and tunable is every three over anything you've seen before? Well, from what I've seen before, I mean, I've obviously seen quite a bit from the other teams and, you know, some teams already looking looking pretty stable out there and, and doing a good job. For us, it's early days, first day of sailing, so we've got to, like I said, we've got a few little tweaks we need to make in terms of the systems, how we're setting the boat up, but we can make those, you know, we've got to go, go away and, and analyse the performance of the boat and we'll get, we'll get the boat in the shed. We need to do some, some good systems checks and, and structural checks after a day like today and you know make some of those changes that will uh, give us a bit more stability and confidence to push the boat a bit harder. And final question, how did the new long span feel, uh, foils feel? Is it a game changer like we are hearing for Barcelona conditions? Yeah, like, like I was saying, just that uh, we did a couple of takeoffs and already you just straight away you feel the, the extra performance in the boat. Uh, you know, some of that will be hull shape, but also the foils, of course, and you know, being able to take off with you know, slightly choppier sea states and, and lighter winds that we might see here during the competition. That's going to be a big part part of the performance of these boats. And already, it was it was great to feel that today. All right, thanks so much for your time, Ben. Thank you. Thank you.
new boats, new faces, and an accumulation of pent-up energy and excitement will have to stay on hold as the winds refuse to blow today on the Bay of Palma for what should have been the first day of racing for the 2024-52 Super Series season, at 52 Super Series Palma Vila Sailing Week. Rain clouds eliminated any chance of a sailing breeze and the fleet remained poised at the Real Club Nordico de Palma's race dock for the day, but by mid-afternoon it was clear there was no chance of equable racing. Well, here we are back in Palma for the start of the 2024 season. Great vibes, good mood. 80% happiness. And no more than 20% grumpy. Good morning, it's so good to be back. Good to be back. back. 52 Super Series, come back. Fred! It's good to be back. It's good to be back. We're back! NYU is back. We are back! Hooray! Unfortunately, not enough breeze to go racing today, but we did catch up with Harm Muller Spreer, the owner driver of the new Platoon Aviation, and we spoke about his new boat. We are pretty much excited to get the new boat, but I mean, it's a long way to go because the boat is totally different in the whole concept. It's sailing differently, and you have to learn a lot how, how could you improve to get up to speed. We could see Allegra is more or less the same design, and they have been uh, maybe 10 days early on the water. They improved a little bit more than us, so there is some room for improvement for sure. And why build a new boat then? What's the what's the reason? You had a very, very good, probably the best boat in the fleet before. We sit together last year and we saw two different designs and um, on the computer the designer showed us the improvement by a few seconds per mile. Then I grabbed the chance during the regatta in Mahon to decide to do a new boat and here it is. You're regretting it a little bit? Uh, not really. I, I mean, for sure we are not uh, the super favorite for the first events, but my, we have a really strong team and everybody is working hard together. We had so many good meetings in the last week, so we will see. Where else can you make improvements this year? I mean, you had a stunning season last year, world champions and 52 Super Series champions, but you did leave a few points on the board over the course of the season, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, the biggest improvement should be if we are not having any red flags. I mean, I think we lost like 30 points on red flag last year. We should uh, do better in this. So, unfortunately then, no racing, everything poised to go again tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Six of the eight men's and women's dinghy Olympic places on offer at the last chance regatta were claimed by sailors on a rain-soaked final day of qualification. In the women's dinghy Ilka 6, event winner Abru Bolat had already earned an Olympic spot for Romania before today's medal races, and she was joined in the select group who will be heading to Marseille by Cyprus's Marilena Macri and Nethra Kumanan of India. Lynn Pledikos, of Slovenia, also claimed an Olympic place today. Today was the last day of the last chance regatta, the final opportunity for a nation to grab a spot for the sailing at Paris 2024. In the 470s, four spots were up for grabs, but only one was decided today in the medal race, and that was for 30. In the men's single hander, the final place went to Enrique Arathun from El Salvador, who will be representing his nation for the third successive Olympic Games. And in the women, the final four spots go to Slovenia, Romania, Cyprus, and India. Thank God that I managed to, to, to be one step closer to the Olympics. We're making history. Romania qualified for the first time in sailing at the Olympics. So I'm, I'm very, very happy. I love this sailing, you know, I love this sport. So it's pretty amazing. I'm really excited about the games. Yeah, it's still unbelievable. The Nacro 17 had four spots up for grabs in total, but only two available today. 
Canada missing for just one point, it ended up being for Belgium and Japan. It's super cool, I think we're really excited. So we're still a super young team, so yeah, I think we'll overall was be pretty experienced. It's again, lots of uh, knowledge about it, but uh, yeah, we're just happy to go, I think. Yeah. Super proud as well to represent Belgium, and it's, uh, and it's an honor, really. And in the men's skiff, also good for Asia because Hong Kong just grabbed the last place, which means that Italy just missed out. No, we're, we're very happy to be qualified. Um, it's an honor to, you know, to, to, to be able to represent the country at the Games. You know, we're happy to have get here, uh, gotten here with, uh, in good shape. Also a good day for Japan in the women's skiff because they grab a spot along with Czechia. Close racing action captured from the Calvin Air helicopter, from on the water, interviews at the prize giving, and all the fun at the parties on the first day of racing, English Harbour Rum Race Day 1 at Antigua Sailing Week. English Harbour Rum Race Day kicked off racing action on Sunday, the 28th of April 2024, at the 55th edition of Antigua Sailing Week. The international fleet got their first taste of racing in tropical heat on the stunning south coast of Antigua. An easterly breeze of 7 to 13 knots and flat sea state provided sweet conditions, but the competition was full of spice. We are at the end of day one of the 55th annual Antigua Sailing Week, and what a day it's been. We've been planning for so long, and the planning is yielding wickedly great results. Incredibly tight racing. Not only are positions being exchanged, but the times between positions is super duper close. And that is in every class, from CSA Racing 1 right through 6, all the bare boats, and legacy and club classes as well. The fun factor, like out of 10, Daddy. at least a 12. We had unexpected breeze and our boat was incredibly fast in it. The crew is, in, is working increasingly well together. We had an amazing wind today. It's such an amazing time to be here in Antigua again. We sail for Seconds Are Sailing and we're sailing school here in Antigua. And uh, we have an all-female crew. We had two people who had never been on a boat before and two people who were fifth day on a boat. So that was pretty exciting. The racing was great. The curve at which everybody was learning because we went from not being able to do a straight tack with a, a decent angle to actually having really nice sharp tacks by the end of the day. So that was great. And um, having our competitors actually root for us as well. That was great. When skippers come to Antigua Sailing Week, they expect that the racing is gonna be hard, but they know the partying is gonna be just as hard. And the perfect lubricant for that is English Harbor Rum and they host amazing parties. We'll see lots of them this week. The partying hard uh, went on last night and uh, then we went out and we just had a great day of racing. Could not stop smiling and laughing all day. Nico is off in the CIC Transat for what promises to be an extreme North Atlantic crossing. This first solo transatlantic race marks the beginning of the season. See you on the other side, Nico. But not before you have a damage problem. This is the calm before his storm. A broken bowsprit has not taken him from the race. He will fix it in New York. I feel very well. The boat is ready, the weather forecast is uh, quite uh, nice and smooth for the start. Maybe a bit too smooth and probably a bit too slow, but uh, it's always more easy to start a race in that way compared to have a stormy condition. So it's a bit more, it's a bit less stressful for the start and also for the few hours on the first night. Uh, it's nice to have the time to, to, I would say, to dig into, into the race and then the weather uh, 
system on the North Atlantic uh, looks uh, quite interesting with uh, many choices to, to make. So I think it's going to be interesting and I'm quite, uh, quite happy to, to take part of that race. To be honest, I think uh, the boat is uh, really ready because the plan for the technical team is to be off the day before the start. Which is always interesting because that means that their job list uh, is down. I can spend uh, some time with only the technical director of the boat. Vers 9h30, à peu près, Nico, il doit arriver au bateau. On n'oublie pas, 10h18, c'est le départ ponton. On peut larguer la garde, Baptiste. First of all, obviously, it's a competition, so I would like to perform well, the best as I can. To me, it is very important to do that part because uh, it's a very good training for the Vendée Globe at the end of the year. So the goal is also to arrive in New York. Ciao, mec. Nico. Salut. Fais-nous ça bien, comme tu sais faire. Bonne transat, Nico. I like the way we work together with uh, a good balance between uh, fun and serious. When you start for a transatlantic race in solo, especially in solo, especially on this kind of boat, there is uh, always a kind of uh, apprehension. Uh, but on the other hand, I am very, very happy to take the start of that race. I think the last two or three days there is some apprehension, but I start to know quite well myself and I'm pretty sure that uh, before the start of the race I will be totally uh, involved in the race and the apprehension uh, would be gone. The goal is to check that everything is working well for the Vendée Globe. Tony Langley's Gladiator team took the first race win of the 2024 52 Super Series season at 52 Super Series Palmavila Sailing Week after profiting from a bold call on the first downwind leg allowed the British flag team to move up from 8th at the first windward mark to lead by the leeward gate. With four times 52 Super Series champion Guillermo Parada steering, owner Langley calling tactics, and Italian navigator Bruno Zarilli completing the afterguard, the recovery saw them finish clear ahead of Takashi Okura's early leaders sled in second and Doug Devos's quantum racing powered by American Magic in third. Welcome to day two here at the 52 Super Series Palma Vela Sailing Week. Weather looks a bit complicated. It's a simple but complicated day. It's a simple because it's all about the movement of a low pressure center. Complicated is because it's very hard to predict when it's going to stay. I think we're going to have the chance to sail this afternoon. So it could be that we're going to see some wind from uh, south, southwest as well later in the afternoon. So I'm uh, optimistic. Well, after a long delay, race number one of the 52 Super Series Palma Vela Sailing Week got underway in a relatively light eight to nine knots of breeze. Up the first beat, well, Sled made a nice start off the pin end. The line seemed to be dominating the left side and actually got round the top mark first. Meantime, Gladiator had a very poor start and were way back, but down the first run, a little bit of a wind shift and extra pressure down the left side, so Gladiator come round the front of the fleet and through the uh, leeward gate with the lead, and they led all the way to the finish line, uh, Sled getting second, and uh, Quantum Racing, powered by American Magic, getting third. So far we are enjoying the boat, we are still learning about her, but we feel that we are a little more competitive, especially pointing-wise. This boat has a different keel and we, we feel that we are able to hold lanes better. And still we are finding we are very quick downwind, so we think we are more competitive this year speed-wise. It's a really good vibe, nice, chilled, uh, good bunch of people and uh, yeah, really lovely team to be with. The standings after one race, the leaders are Gladiator on one point, second Sled on two points, and third Quantum Racing powered by American Magic. So the cobwebs blown away after the winter, the rust removed, the nerves settled after that one race. Good win for a Gladiator, plenty more to come. Join us tomorrow.
the sailing squad for Australia's 2024 America's Cup Challenge in the Unicredit Youth and Poog Women's Competitions in Barcelona has been announced, with a combined team of 13 sailors including several Olympic and sail GP athletes. The Australian squad has been selected from across the nation to contest this high-speed, high-tech, and extreme skills competition, making history in the world's oldest sporting trophy event and returning Australia to the Cup spotlight. I tell you what, any boss who sacks anyone for not turning up the day is a bum. One of the great moments in sporting history. Of course we can win. It's the 40th anniversary that Australia 2 won the America's Cup in 1983. They inspired a huge amount of the sailing that this nation still sees today. I think there's a big legacy, a lot to live up to, but also a lot of opportunity to start building a legacy of our own. Great results for this country, and we see this with the Matildas, for example. With a shot. You know, the parallels there, you know, people can understand the opportunities of potential. First ever women's America's Cup regatta. Going to inspire a lot of future generations of little girls. AC-40s are the most exciting boats on the planet. Putting together a united front between the two teams to, to really upskill as quickly as possible. It's a pinnacle of sailing. The new winner for the America's Cup. We're hungry and we're really ready to put a team together that is wanting to win. I'm in the sim, we're learning the dexterity and all the controls and getting used to it. And the adaptability of the whole team is going to really carry us through it. Total is more than the sum of the parts. We're fast learners and we have good heart, we're good sailors, we let that all together and I think we can win. I want to win the, the Youth America's Cups. We're going to win and it's the expectation we've set of ourselves, we're going to do everything in our power to be the best. We really do believe we can win this and we're really excited to share this opportunity with you. Now is the time.